Hey guys, only two days left of muzzleloader season here in West Virginia. I ended up getting my target buck on camera last night. Uh, he came into a food plot during daylight around 5 o'clock. Was bumping some does and feeding. My hope is, is I can get in there this evening and maybe he'll do the same thing again. My buddy Andy had said that he had talked with some people that saw bucks at least tending or chasing some deer. I'm hoping that maybe these fawns are coming in late now, uh, here in this late season and coming into estrus. Hoping he'll come back and do the same thing again tonight. Uh, if not, maybe another decent buck might come in and see if we can't go ahead and harvest him with a muzzleloader and try to get it on camera. I've only ever taken one other deer with a muzzleloader, so it'd be kind of fun uh, to be able to take another one. But what um, I'm going to do is I already got done taking my scent-free shower. I'm going to get my gear together, go ahead and start heading to the property and uh, get settled in here early. Make sure to give time uh, for the place to settle down, see if I can't get some deer in that food plot, and then we'll just see where the action goes. So. Whenever uh, we meet up again, we'll be in the tree. So, see you then. And I'm after a, a ten point that we've got on camera that we've seen now for a couple years. I'll be honest, I won't be heartbroken if I don't get him. That uh, he'd be a dandy next year. And, but if he shows up tonight up here in my food plot, I will we'll take him. If not, he'll live to go another day and hopefully make it into next year but it's kind of overcast it's about 38 degrees it's going to start going off it's supposed to get real cold here in the next couple days but we did get him on camera here yesterday evening in the food plot but then this morning we got him on camera clear down over the hill across the road so, who knows? You know, it's potluck right now. I'm just trying to sit on a food source. They've decimated my food plot of uh, brassicas with purple top turnips. and I've also got cereal grains and winter rye, and they've, they've got it ate down to the dirt. So, I don't know that there's really much here for them. But anyways, if him or another decent buck comes out, we'll take him. So, stick with me.
So this buck completely catches me by surprise. I've been sitting here in this tree stand all evening watching some does and fawns. The wind is gusting, the temperature is plummeting, and I'm thinking there's no way this deer is coming in. I'm almost even thinking about packing up, and boom, there he is. So next thing I know, I'm trying to rush, get the camera set up, try to get on him, see if I can't get an opportunity at him. He starts checking some scrapes, checking the does, and let's see what happens next. food plot checking on does and uh, he was down there by a, a, a cattle tub of minerals <clears throat> that we put out a few years ago and they never have hit it but uh, 
if you see it down there, that green, that's all that is, is a tub of minerals from years ago that they haven't even touched. But he was down there hitting some scrapes and uh, around those does and fawns. <sighs> Please, Lord, help me get this deer. All right, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call my wife real quick. She's not. Hello. Hey, baby. Hey. Just letting you know, I just shot a ten point. No. -uh. Swear. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's the the one I came up here after. I'm still shaking like a leaf. Wow. <laughs> so I'm sitting here filming, calling you. Oh, okay. So, but. Uh, wow. Yeah, so uh, it, it'll be a little bit, you know, I, it looks like I reviewed the footage. I hit him right behind the shoulder, perfect shot. And um, I haven't got down yet. I gotta tear down all the equipment and stuff and get down, look for blood and everything. But anyways, wanted to give you a heads up and stuff and uh, okay. let you know I'll probably be a little while. All right, awesome, congratulations. All right, thanks, love you. Love you too. All right, bye. Bye. All right guys, let's get down and go look for this deer. Well guys, I got down, started looking for blood, and I was just struggling to find any. I went and, you know, went to the point of impact, I went over where I knew that he had exited the food plot, and I just couldn't find any blood. And the other thing to make matters worse was I think I'd forgotten my headlamp, and the only thing I really had to use was my iPhone light at the time. I didn't even have one that I think was even down in my truck. So anyways, I ended up looking for a good while, uh, finally went ahead and came across blood where it was crossing over on the neighbor's property, had to go get permission to go recover the deer from the neighbor, and then eventually did find that the deer had went maybe uh, 100, 150 yards and uh, piled up. But I didn't want to go ahead and share the recovery here that I did from the nighttime, and so instead I'm sharing you the recovery I did from the daytime the very next morning. So let's get to that. All right guys, well it's the next morning after the harvest. I was able to take this beautiful 10 point last night in Work County and got about two years of history with him. Didn't know what he was as a year and a half, but uh, last year we had him on camera and then this year, of course, we've been watching him. He was the target buck. The one in particular that I went after for last night, he's not very wide, but he's got beautiful twos and threes. Good G4 on this side, great brows. And he's a tough one, you know, it's one of those that you know, with only one day left of muzzleloader being today, you know, he, he's got a great chance of making it through and could have really blown up into something next year. But, you know, it's tough to pass up a 137-inch 10-point like this. And so I didn't. But um, I ended up getting him on camera the uh, night before last. And he was bumping some does or fawns in the food plot and checking scrapes and feeding in the plot. And so I thought, well, after talking with my buddy Andy, he had mentioned that there were some other people that had seen some bumping and chasing. I thought maybe the fawns had got to where they, some of them were coming in. So I got up in the food plot there early last night. I think it was around 1.30 or 2. And shortly thereafter, maybe, maybe around 3, I had uh, some fawns start showing up and then um, maybe a doe or two. And when it was all said and done, I ended up having about 5 out in the plot. And uh, there about 5 o'clock, he, uh, he stepped out, completely surprised me actually. I was thinking it was almost end of the night and about ready to pack it in. But um, he came in from a way that I never expected at all. Hit a few different scrapes, started checking some of the does. There at one point, you know, you could see through the tree limbs. He was lip curling, checking where a doe had just been, or a fawn. And um, ended up presenting me with about an 80 yard shot. He stepped over there behind, you probably saw the green tub of cattle mineral that we had set out a couple years ago. And, hoped that the deer would would take to it but they never did it's just been sitting there but that's what you see there in the picture in the foreground that he's standing behind as he's feeding in the food plot but um, I tell you I love doing my food plot work you know it's great all through the season provides them great protein um, serves as a great attractant in all my plots I do half brassicas which is like turnips kale um, radishes and then the other half I do cereal grains and then I overseed with winter rye and clover and that way here in the spring too that winter rye will be the first up and then that'll help carry as a nurse crop for the clover and the turkeys and the deer will just pound it with that high protein but as you can see it just works as a great late season food source for them pulled them right in not to mention you know you bring in those does and the fawns especially here in late season 
if a buck's still looking, they'll, they'll come into that area just trying to get on those um, food sources. But uh, yeah, like I said, I was fortunate he came in, made about an 80-yard shot, got him right behind both shoulders, went about 100, 150 yards and laid up. And uh, it was a great way to cap the end of my season. I was able to harvest a beautiful eight point in Ohio with my 350 Legend, about 140 inch deer. And then now I was able to harvest uh, this beautiful 10 point here in West Virginia with my muzzle loader. Only the second deer I've ever taken with a muzzle loader. Uh, the other one was just a, a beautiful Ohio 10 point. And now I've got this West Virginia 10 point. And um, also, too, that stand's treated me great now. I've killed two deer out of that stand uh, overlooking that plot. First one was a 10 point with my bow that was just over 130 inches. And then uh, now this one with a muzzle loader being just 137 inches. So, blessed. Just blessed beyond belief. And like I said, I got to thank everyone for all the support, my family, for all the hunting that I do, all the time I spend in the woods, both hunting and my habitat improvements. But you know, it's times like this that you really see how it pays off and you can get beautiful deer like this in West Virginia and, and even better, you know. But I want to say thank you uh, for watching Brothers of Woods Outdoors and we'll see you on the next episode.